This video will be a list of some of the ways that I approach the question of moving forward. Where do we go from here? What do we do in these certain situations? There will be questions here, but there will be follow-ups as well. So if you have anything to add to this discussion or these questions or whatever it is that I'm presenting here, leave it in the comments and we'll go from there. So where do we go from here? Part two. In the last video, I was talking about the question itself. Where do we go? Who are we? Is there somewhere to go? Where are we right now? We're calling here. Where have we been? Who are the people who have already been talking about where we should go? All of these perspectives need to be taken into account when you're asking these questions. How I'm approaching this at this point is to consider yourself on a trail. All of us are out here walking on a trail. You're in the forest by yourself and you're lost. At some point, all of us were lost. We didn't even know we were on a trail. We were on somebody else's trail. They told us to walk down this trail. This is the way to go. This is your destiny. We are evolving into a higher state of being and it's right down this way. Follow us. We've done this before. We are your elders. But as many of us know, you can't just follow people because they're your elders. You can't just follow people because they got a fancy hat on. You can't just follow people because they've been doing something for a while. Many people have been down certain trails and they get stuck on those trails. And if they get stuck on those trails, they don't want to be seen as being stuck so they start to dress up the trail. They set camp just off of the trail. And in order to build on that camp, they got to hook people who are walking down that trail. No, stay here. I've been on the trail before where you came and I've been down that trail even further. And I came right back here. I'm staying right here. I set up camp. This is where we need to be. They set up camp on that trail. They convince you to set up camp on that trail. And that's the end of the movement. They're living there, blissed out. Looking at the beauty of the trail. Living the high life. While everybody's either getting lost, going further down the trail, or not even making it to where they are on the trail. Many of these people have been going on these trails in the wrong direction. A lot of these trails are carved out in this forest to run you off a cliff, run you into obscurity, run you into chaos, run you into nothing. They are there to trick you and consume your time. This is where most of the energy is going to be focused on in this video, is the wasting of your time and the accumulating of energies that hold you back from moving forward. So people are lost on that trail. People have been going the wrong direction for generations and convincing others to follow them, even though they've been going the wrong way. A large majority of people out there are still telling your people to go a certain direction. This is where I'm saying you have to deal with these people because a large part of your group is following them. If you plan on talking about a we to move forward, start with the people who are moving in a direction that is not forward. They're wasting their energy. They're burning themselves out. They're running down these trails confidently. These are people on your team. These are people that if they were to focus that energy with you, with themselves, they would be able to move more efficiently. This is where I focus most of my energy. Throughout the time of me being on this trail, on my trail, doing this work, this is where I found is the most optimal direction to focus my energy. In that discussion, to sum everything up, the best thing you can do the, in the majority of the day, the majority of the work that is not limited to a day, the best you can do is make information available to those who are looking 
and only to those who are looking. Because the ones who are not have fought to get on that trail and be a part of that group. They want to be a part of that group that is running off a cliff, that is running into chaos, that is running into nothing. They fought to get there and you can't tell them anything else. They have to go and run those trails in order to find which trail they need to be on. That is the way that is the most organic way for people to get to where it is that they need to be. Not everybody needs to be on the same trail. But there is an optimal direction. That direction has many trails. And you might go off on a tangent. You will get lost. You'll fall off a cliff. You'll go into all this chaos. You'll fall into nothing many times over. But you're moving in a particular direction. Whether you like it or not, that energy is going somewhere. You can either be a part of it or not. It's up to you. It's always up to that person. So you can never hold on to the direction or the velocity in which other people are moving. It's not your responsibility. It's egotistical to think otherwise. So once again, the best you can do is make information available. They will fight you. Do not engage with people who will fight you. If they have enough energy to fight you, they have enough energy to look at things for themselves. That's it. Leave them be. You do not have enough time to waste on them when you have people who are willing to listen and be grateful for your time. Time and efficiency is key. Time and efficiency. Efficiency makes the most out of your time. Your time is the journey. The time is not the destination. The time is the journey. The destination is the illusion. Make your time As efficient as it can be. Because we all know what wasted time is. We all know what dead time is. It's a lack of movement. It's a lack of thought. It's a lack of understanding. It's a lack of awareness. Find out how to be more efficient. Before you want to engage your time in anything. Find out how to make your time as efficient as it can be. For the ones who do have the time desire and patience to do the work just plant the seeds plant the seeds that are missing or struggling to grow in their garden and move on avoid all celebrations of conscious positioning that is anti-time and for people who don't know what i'm talking about right there avoid the people who celebrate who and what they are on their path because it's just a waste of time and worse than that it's anti-time Because you're now in the world, you're in the realm of movement, efficient time. But when you step into that world, it's beautiful. It's filled with light and energy and everything that you could possibly want. It's easy to be attracted to the light and keep running to the light and just stay there. It's easy to do that. Do not do that. Do not be consumed or waste your time with people who do that. What is it that you are celebrating? If you're on a freeway, moving, do you have time to celebrate? This doesn't mean do not reflect, but people know what I mean when I say those who celebrate where they are. They create movements around them. They create followings around them. These are the celebrators. They found a particular idea and they celebrate the hell out of it and they want to sell it to you. This is what a celebration is. They're selling their shit and you got to buy it. If you don't buy it, you're an enemy of theirs. So avoid all celebrations of conscious positioning. It's anti-time. Completely avoid people who love anti-time. They are the inverse of people who love the mainstream. It's the same thing. People who love anti-time are in the same boat as people who love the mainstream. The mainstream is anti-time. If given a choice between someone loving the mainstream and someone loving the glorified idea of themselves, spend your time with the mainstream. Let me say that again. If given a choice between someone loving the mainstream and someone loving the glorified idea of themselves, 
spend your time with the mainstream. Their movement is more probable than someone who loves the illusion. Someone who's glorified the idea of themselves loves the illusion. The likelihood of them moving anywhere is less than somebody who's stuck in the mainstream. Because they've left the mainstream, they've moved for a certain amount of time, and they've gotten to a point. Not only have they gotten to that point, but they have firmly decided that this is where I need to be. This is where I am. This is where I need to be. That rust has settled. They have locked themselves there. Leave it be. There's more of a probability in the movement of the mainstream than someone who loves the illusion. This is because most mainstreamers do not love where they are at. They just tolerate it. So if you approach without attachment and present information, they're not locked into the mainstream like somebody who's locked into the idea of themselves. So if you hit them on an organic tip, there's more of a chance that they're going to take that and run. Another reason why to focus your energy on the mainstream in relation to somebody who's stuck in the illusion of themselves is, it, is because it's easier to spot whether or not you need to move on with a mainstreamer. If you need to move on, you're going to know immediately. All right, this is as far as I can go. I'm done. With somebody else, they can egg you on. They'll play the illusion a lot more. And it'll be clouded. It'll be harder to see. Half woke people have a knack for shape shifting. They shape shift to what they think you want to hear without actually moving anywhere. They will waste more of your time than the others. When you hit the wall with either of these people, move on. I myself like to leave on a high note. So I start to gauge just before they start getting jittery. And then move on. Avoid people who learn by projecting and bringing you down. They waste too much time and energy. No matter how smart they sound, your time is more important. Learn how to be comfortable with saying no and being around people who are easily offended. Your presence will offend them. If you're constantly moving and there's nothing to grab onto, your very presence will offend them. Find that time, that point to spend with certain groups. Once you hit that point, move. Have zero expectations for yourself or any of these people. Zero expectations for the engagement. Zero expectations for yourself. Zero expectations for them. It's going to be what it is. It's them. It's on them. All you can do is plant a seed. All you can do is be present for them, largely. Do not concern yourself with dead horses and burning buildings. Let me say that again. Do not concern yourself with dead horses and burning buildings. If people are defending the foundation of a burning building, let them be. That world is falling all on its own. The best we can do is to make sure we keep watching as it falls so as to not be damaged by the debris. Or anybody else around you be damaged by the debris. The power of that world is illusory. Let it fall. Generate your own power and find a place to focus that energy. Smaller batches are easier and more efficient uses of energy. Let me say that again. Smaller batches are easier and more efficient uses of energy. Large scale movement is an illusion that attempts to keep some of the old destructive world alive. Do not start building until the foundation is clear. If you start building on old foundations before the dust settles, you might not realize that that foundation was also meant to crumble and is not strong enough to maintain its structure with what you plan on building there. Family members are just people. Do not get locked into thinking that the smaller batch of your direct family is your direction. Spend the time that is needed and move on. The chances that your family unit is the smaller batch of which is most optimal to spend your time on this matter is slim to none. It might only appear to have huge possibilities because they are closer to you, but family will also have a tendency to lead you on just as a half wokester would. 
just to pawn off the illusion of forward progress. Do not waste your time, like anybody else, intuit where the move point is and go. Do not leave attachments to their work. You can still be present for them in ways that do not indiscriminately pull from you, but go no further than that. That can and will get messy, but the dust will settle eventually. If it doesn't, let it go. You are like a magnet to rusty pipes. Rust transfers, and those pipes leak. They leak nothing but time and energy. Some people will be repelled by your magnetism. This is normal, like the two sides of a magnet. You need those people to stay away, no matter how close you think they should be. And not everybody who is attracted to you is meant to be in your field. Magnets do not discriminate, but you have to in order to maintain your energy and make yourself available to those who are more open to receiving it. Cover yourself in a rusty following and you will eventually rust yourself out. The mainstream is based on rusting you out. Half woke followings on YouTube or anywhere are a carbon copy of the mainstream. Rust is profitable. Do not allow yourself to accumulate rust. If you see rust anywhere on your body, remove it immediately before moving on. Moving on with rust on your body is like knowingly transferring an STD. A little STD is still an STD. A little rust will become a big problem down the road. The only way to avoid rust is to keep moving and keep a high standard of maintenance. Too many people on your vessel will slow you down and rust you out. Anchoring yourself in too many perspectives, or even just one heavy one, will stop movement and rust you out. Keep moving. Keep cleaning. Keep painting. The work is the destination. Anybody telling you otherwise is selling something.